Hey you guys, this is Julie. Welcome back. Welcome if you're new to my channel. It's lovely to have you here with me today. Um, I hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm wrapping you in the wings of the angels. I have all of the illuminated seraphim here with me today. Um, it's a beautiful uplifting energy and my heart's intention is to bring this energy through to you today and to cover the topic of earth angels. And so this information is kind of a culmination of my work personally with the angelic realm and my own experience as an earth angel or an incarnated angel um, here during this lifetime. And so you could kind of call this earth angel 101, but just know that it, it is from my perspective um, in uh, cooperation with my angels who have been urging me to kind of get this content out here for a while. So um, pleased to be here and we will kind of begin with just sort of describing what earth angels are. And so you just kind of heard me use the term earth angel and incarnated angel. And there is a difference. Um, an incarnated angel is a type of an earth angel, but they don't necessarily um, share all of the same qualities. So I'm going with the overarching uh, category, which is earth angel today. Um, so earth angels are essentially light workers. They are powerful light workers with a legacy of healing and miracles, which they bring with them from the angelic realms when they incarnate as human beings. Their souls consciously accepted this divine assignment to come to earth to spread their wisdom and their healing energies. And so they've spent lifetimes and had many, many, many experiences as guardian angels. Some of them have had experiences working with the ascended masters um, and have achieved their own level of mastery that has allowed their soul or their consciousness to progress into the highest realms of consciousness. And they reside fairly close to the creator. The angels which reside closest to the creator are known as the illuminated seraphim. And the illuminated seraphim often serve as the overarching umbrella energy or guides for incarnated earth angels here on the 3D plane um, here on Gaia. So in order to complete their lightworker mission, earth angels must consciously embrace that they incarnated to serve earth's ascension and to help humanity essentially move towards this more loving, harmonious, unified world by embodying and shining the light of the creator, the light of the divine in human form. True earth angels have a strong sense of purpose for this reason. And they, that, that manifests often in their human lives as this deep urge to be doing something more with their life. And it's almost as if they subconsciously recognize that they're here for a big purpose and that time is of the essence. And in the beginning of their realization that they are here as earth angels, they may not even know what it is that they're supposed to be doing, where they came from. They might not consciously, um, you know, identify themselves as um, an incarnated soul. Even they might be so heavily identified with their humanity um, you know, that they experience this period of kind of confusion and lack of direction in life, um, knowing that they're here for a purpose, that there's a reason that life has more meaning than um, just to live and work and, and die. Um, but as they evolve and become um, more and more aligned with their spiritual purpose, they begin to receive knowings or flashbacks or rememberings of incarnating from the angelic realm or with some type of purpose that involves working with the angels. And so another characteristic or quality of earth angels is that they are highly empathic. And I mean, highly, highly empathic, physically, emotionally, mentally, energetically, telepathically, they sense into the innermost essence of others or of objects, or of places, things in their environment, and they feel that in their own bodies as if it's them. 
earth angels are born with this intense sensitivity. It's something that they are innately given as part of their gift and their purpose. And so they grow up essentially feeling very raw and open and susceptible to the energies of other people, to chemicals, to um, synthetic products, pollution, and violence of any form. And for this reason, they may have a really hard time being in crowds or feeling bombarded by emotions and physical sensations or even intrusive thoughts that they begin to sense and absorb from other people. And so um, it's important to note that for earth angels, it's not that they just dislike violence or dislike, um, you know, the darker aspects of humanity. They truly, genuinely cannot tolerate any form of violence. So being in environments um, where there are arguments, uh, negative media, the news, crime shows, violent movies, um, any of those things, they really feel energetically repulsed or repelled by. And so many times the people who are around them will tell them, you're too sensitive or um, you're too emotional or they, they subtly or overtly send this message that the earth angel needs to toughen up or be realistic about the darker sides of life. Um, you know, because they can come off incredibly idealistic and selective in what they can tolerate being around. They're heavily swayed um, by emotional energy. And so um, earth angels will feel this energetic repulsion when they are witnessing or come in contact with any kind of act of hatred, bullying, animal cruelty, um, witnessing anyone suffer abuse, even if it's like somebody that they dislike or might even identify as like an enemy, they can't stand to watch them suffer abuse. Um, they hate horror shows or documentaries, being around chronic negativity or cynicism, yelling, um, physical aggression, and so on. And because they incarnate in a world that is, um, you know, <laughs> truly full of all those things that I just listed, Earth angels often begin their um, spiritual awakening with this um, sense of not belonging, and they may even curse their sensitivity or try to hide from it. And often this is done by numbing through food, alcohol, drugs, shopping. Um, they might wear a mask or false persona of, you know, trying to, to see themselves as tougher um, or to place more distance between themselves and what they sense in others. They can fall into patterns of guarding their hearts um, or hiding their true selves, seeking to escape through binge eating, binge watching TV, um, uh, escaping through the internet or social media, through sex. They might even develop love addictions um, and escape by going from relationship to relationship to relationship just to feel that high um, of the honeymoon phase of relationships to escape the pain of their their level of awareness and sensitivity to the world um, oftentimes they're caught in like this pattern of chronic daydreaming or dissociation from their bodies and um, because of that they may avoid or have difficulty sustaining close relationships or um, feeling successful in environments where their sensitivity is heightened and triggered So earth angels are also very commonly exposed to trauma or toxic environments very early on. So they have this pattern of difficult childhoods that are really marked by this deep sense of feeling different, separate, or alienated from others in some significant way. And it might be an internal sense of this, or it could be reflected very overtly and obviously by the people who they engage with, their family, their friends, teachers, um, you know, anybody that they come in contact with early in life might reflect this message upon them that they there's something different about them or wrong with them um, or weird about them. Um, for example, in my own life, my siblings used to say to me that I was a milkman's baby because I didn't 
always fit in um, or like the same things or respond the same way to the same stimuli and experiences. And I actually looked different um, than my siblings did. And so for a long time, I actually believed that maybe I was adopted or, you know, had a different um, father, for example. Um, but as earth angels grow up, you may have these thoughts such as, I don't belong here, I wish I could go home, um, or just kind of a general feeling of not belonging in the presence of others or really fitting into these traditional systems of society like our school system, um, our, our social systems. And you may have been the only empath or spiritually um, connected or aware person in your family or your close circles. And um, because of that, you might have developed this incredibly self-reliant attitude where you had to kind of foster this sense of internal resiliency um, to what appears to be a broken record of really challenging relationships and circumstances or, or early life experiences. And ultimately, during the healing phase of these experiences, which often comes later in life for earth angels, we discover that a deeply spiritual element of life that draws us to our purpose and mission. And so earth angels will use what has happened to them as a lesson or a catalyst that allows them to transcend possibly decades of pain and suffering, rejection, abandonment, abuse, um, feeling unworthy, unlovable, all these things that will eventually be used to serve their ability or as fuel for them to rise above and emerge more compassionate and attuned to the suffering of others. And this fosters an incredible sense of um, fortitude, an inner resiliency, um, and internal tools and resources that can, can eventually be used to serve as a beacon of hope for others who cross paths with them. Now, initially, they may not feel resilient at all. They may identify with that um, programming or that notion of you're weak, you're sensitive, you need to toughen up, um, be more realistic about life, or, you know, life's not fair, um, things that kind of crush their spirit and make them feel like they're um, unrealistic or that their idealism just doesn't belong or fit into this world or into their relationships. So the next characteristic of earth angels is that they are incredibly heart-centered beings. They truly exist in a different frequency apart from the majority of humanity above the third dimension of, and, and beyond. And so they perceive and engage with the world through their heart chakra or through the eyes of love. And as a result, um, they can experience and catalyze a greater depth of authentic love um, unconditional love, as well as a greater depth of sensitivity to the full emotional spectrum. So they might be able to have this amazing capacity to experience love and connection and joy, while at the same time, have this heightened um, tendency or, or ability to sense and feel into the depths of pain, suffering, um, depression, you name it. And so often with this sensitivity and this um, heart-centered approach, they are able to give the gift of experiencing true unconditional love to others and a true sense of acceptance um, and compassion in ways that other people previously didn't believe were even possible. And so they may serve as um, the lesson or as the realization that true love exists for people in their lives, which is incredibly beautiful and powerful and part of their purpose, um, but also kind of leads to the next characteristic or quality of um, the earth angel experience, which is kind of this um, history of challenging relationships. So on the flip side of their incredibly empathic nature and heart-centered approach, earth angels often find themselves in these frustrating relationships or codependent patterns of relating to other people in which they have a really, really difficult time establishing a balance between giving and receiving. 
And so earth angels tend to be, at least um, in their wounded state, these chronic overgivers, people pleasers, these wounded, disempowered empaths that have strong tendencies to really fall in love, like fully, deeply in love with someone's potential. And then they have this subconscious um, agenda or desire or intention to try to coach that person to their greatness. So they might constantly be reflecting opportunities or potentials for growth or for um, expression or creativity or, um, you know, essentially mirroring to the other what they're capable of, um, what, whether that's healing or actualizing their true self or um, tapping into, you know, a, a greater depth of their own humanity or finding a greater meaning or significance in their lives. Earth angels are this mirror of what is possible and so they really approach their relationships with others from a place of how can I help this person and how can I help them achieve their fullest potential for this reason they these earth angels may stay in relationships way longer than an average person would or they might ignore the red flags in relationships out of this deep sense of faith and hope um, to fall in love with that person's potential and either subconsciously or even consciously try to guide that person to their greatness. So they might stay in relationships way longer um, than they, they really should or ignore their intuitions that are telling them this person doesn't want to heal or this person doesn't really want to grow or they don't, they're not really interested in looking at their potential. And, you know, a big source of this is our childhood programming. Um, Earth angels tend to have been raised by emotionally unavailable or abusive parents. And your parents can truly love you and do the absolute best that they they want to or give you um, the nicer things in life. But if they're not authentically present and they're not able to accept and embrace your uniqueness as an earth angel and foster a sense of confidence and um, love for your your ability to sense things that are unseen, Um, you end up having this experience of emotional unavailability um, or a lack of authentic attunement to the earth angel's needs as a child. And thus they go on to attract those types of friends and lovers later in life. And so earth angels are commonly sent to um, this realm to act as healing catalysts or wake-up calls for dysfunctional families um, or societies. And sometimes this is um, also consciously chosen by earth angels um, by their soul prior to incarnation in order to allow them to progress um, extra quickly during one lifetime. So they might bite off, um, you know, more than they, they can chew from the other side, looking down, believing that they have, um, you know, this potential to make a larger impact by being born, choosing a family um, that has a great deal of dysfunction or a high need for an in-home healer. And so um, within these relationships, whether it's in their childhood or later on, the earth angel may have an extremely difficult time asserting their own needs, um, establishing boundaries, saying no is super, super difficult as an earth angel. angel. Um, they might have, it might be incredibly painful for them to walk away from partners or friends with toxic behaviors Um, such as addictions or anyone who's going through a rough time. And because of their sensitivity to the pain of others and their resistance to abandoning anybody or leaving them, um, you know, on their own, they feel like they're kind of hanging you out to dry. They buy into what I consider to be toxic hope which is this fantasy that if the earth angel does enough for their partner or gives their partner enough love or, um, you know, sacrifices their own needs or is more patient or does a ton of work on their own selves, then that person or their partner will finally heal. And there's a huge difference between healthy hope and toxic hope. Healthy hope 
having hope and belief and faith in the relationship is healthy as long as the other person um, consciously and explicitly believes that there's a need for them to heal, that it even exists, and expresses a readiness and a willingness to commit to their healing work and to do that inner work for themselves. And so far too often, the earth angel falls into this martyr complex, um, or even a victimhood complex, it can be a combination of the two where they feel that they have to fix or save or spare another person from their pain, while simultaneously kind of subconsciously believing that people are taking advantage of them. They start to feel used and can build a lot of resentment or anger towards the people in their lives because they have these um, subconscious or covert expectations that if they give this much or if they stick around or if they sacrifice their own needs, that the other person will reciprocate. And I call this covert or invisible contracts because it's not actually explicitly agreed to It's um, on a subconscious level or on an internal level where one person begins to expect something without actually asking or placing a boundary around that need. And earth angels may feel incredibly guilty asking for boundaries or asking for help in return or seeking support from others because they have this deep fear of being a burden to others and being rejected if they themselves have to place needs or limitations on how much they can give someone else. It's as if they draw their sense of identity and self-worth from being a support to other people, from being the helper, being the healer, being the guide, being the one who picks up their phone whenever you call, being the one who always says yes, being the one who always makes you feel better or fixes how you feel. And so they may also fall into that pattern that I'm speaking to, which is enabling the toxic tendencies of others, like projecting their pain onto the earth angel or projecting all of their needs onto the earth angel, which often feels incredibly familiar to the earth angel because many of them come from families with longstanding histories of addiction, of emotional projection, of self-sabotage or, um, you know, self, uh, self, uh, aggression, self-harm. And so sometimes even the earth angel ends up personally experiencing these addictions or, or self-harming behaviors in an attempt to numb the pain of feeling so different, feeling like they're failing the ones they love or that they're not, they're not, um, fixing the people around them or they can't figure out their family's problems, and also sensing that maybe deep down they're not aligned with their true purpose for being here in this world. So it can be extremely difficult for earth angels to end um, unhealthy relationships uh, with lovers, friends, or abusive family members. They fall into this pattern of what I call the slot machine syndrome. And so how this syndrome works is the longer that the earth angel invests their time, energy, love, thoughtfulness, and care into a relationship, the more difficult it is for them to acknowledge and admit that it's simply not going to pay off, that that person isn't going to suddenly wake up, feel grateful for everything the earth angel has done, and then reciprocate everything that that earth angel has put into it. It's not going to be the fantasy of the relationship that they had dreamed or hoped for. It's not going to be catalyzed from the earth angel's motivation and willingness and support and love. It has to come from within that other person that they're in a relationship with. And so that is an incredibly hard pill to swallow and very, very difficult to unlearn those patterns of codependency or that identifying with the role of martyrdom, um, identifying as the helper, or um, even just, you know, subconsciously living as a chronic people pleaser that is um, so deeply embedded into this 
routine of self-betrayal in order to meet other people's needs that you don't even really know who you are, what you need, or what you want to do. It's almost like you completely forgo your um, individual identity to become codependent with the identity of whoever it is that you're trying to fix or save or love. Okay, so the next quality of earth angels are that they are very pure, open channels of divine energy, of high frequency light. So throughout their lives, they feel called to speak up and share messages of love, compassion, forgiveness, support, and healing for those around them. And they see their relationships truly as these platforms or opportunities to deliver positive, uplifting energy into the collective consciousness. And so as conduits for for angelic frequencies, they transmit the energy of the angelic realm through their mind, body, and creations, which often attract wounded healers who recognize the energies um, on a subtle level and feel relief and comfort and healing when connecting to the earth angel's aura or voice. It's like a call home, a call towards healing, a call towards remembering that soft love that exists when we're connected to the angels and to the divine. So it can be very hard for the earth angel to truly embrace their own voice, to embrace their mission, and to um, fully allow the message that is wanting to be born through their soul in this lifetime to come out and be expressed into the world in a public way. Um, But once they begin to do this and build the self-trust and the self-acceptance that's necessary to shine their light, they are powerful magnets for change for high vibrational experiences, um, whether it be through um, attracting relationships, opportunities, or these more internal mystical experiences where they merge with the divine and with those divine energies that are coming through them. And as channels of higher dimensional energy, earth angels will often experience um, certain somatic or physical um, experiences, such as a, a ringing sound in one ear that um, kind of appears as like a high-pitched tone, which actually represents um, a download, an energetic, um, you know, encoded information that's being relayed to them from the angelic realm in order to help them rise above earthly problems um, and activate their divine gifts. And so earth angels develop this finely tuned extrasensory perception over time that gives them the potential to channel and be conduits of high frequency information, messages, light, activations, um, and with conscious intent, they can channel this in any direction if they choose. And so their prayers and their words and their offerings are incredibly powerful for this reason. Another part of the earth angel um, makeup is that they're highly committed to serving others. They genuinely desire to live a life in service to others, and they constantly seek out relationships, careers, hobbies, and other opportunities in which they can share their gifts, their authentic presence, and their healing tools in an effort to spread those energies of hope, love, and healing into the world. And others may often comment to them or express that their voice or their presence provides a sense of safety and grounding that allows them to kind of open up and receive the love, the compassion, or whatever the message that's being relayed is. And so they may find themselves approached by um, complete strangers in public places who quickly divulge extremely personal information, almost as if they suddenly have entered into um, uh, the role of a counselor or a therapist. They find themselves in these dynamics with their friends, with their family members, with coworkers, um, with people you know, in the line of the grocery store, wherever they find themselves. People tend to be drawn into their aura 
and and to open up to them really quickly and giving them this kind of automatic trust that allows them to kind of express what's on their mind or what's going on within their hearts. And this um, kind of empathic uh, aura, this this uh, light that draws others in, um, leads to the next characteristic of earth angels, which is that many of them choose to channel their gifts um, into careers or professions where they become spiritually evolved healers and teachers. And so once earth angels are awake spiritually, they realize um, that they've incarnated here for a purpose. They consciously recognize and seek to embody and teach higher truths, such as unity, oneness, um, what love really is. Maybe um, they're on a message uh, or on a mission similar to mine, which is to spread this message of what real love means. Um, and they feel called to empower others to heal themselves. So they're not looking to get other people dependent upon them for healing um, or to be the only source of change in the world. They truly want their offerings to ripple out and touch the lives of as many people as possible to empower everyone to become self healers, which often begins um, as the earth angel experiencing an intense drive inwards to heal their own wounds and to heal their own familial relationships because their subconscious and their higher self is preparing them to serve as a healed healer an evolved way shower to other wounded healers or individuals who can benefit from the presence of someone who has authentically done the work and is acting in a healing capacity with a great amount of internal integrity. Um, because it's really easy for people who feel called to the helping professions to you know, get the degree, get into the profession, be doing the work with their clients while completely neglecting or ignoring their own unhealed wounds. And that is um, problematic and detrimental um, for so many reasons. But I was exposed to this firsthand um, when I got my uh, graduate degree in social work and um, practiced as a trauma therapist. Um, I I saw in many settings that I worked in and was in and out of um, other therapists, coaches, um, healers of all kinds, doctors, nurses who are, are have this, this, this authentic desire and, and capacity to help, but it's very limited and um, kind of filtered through their own unprocessed trauma their own um, kind of neuroses, you know, their own depression, their own anxiety, and that, that initial wound of the martyr who is really um, so heavily identified with being in a service position to help others that they kind of fundamentally forget that they have to embody that healed um, version of themselves in order to be truly effective and live by example. And so... Um, you know, earth angels have to go through that period of self-healing, um, which can, you know, require many dark night, uh, dark nights of the soul or these kind of internal phases um, where you become sort of a hermit and withdraw from your relationships or from society um, or from the lifestyle that you had been um, maintaining for, you know, who knows how long in order to make a radical shift within you that will align you with your path of service and your path of um, becoming a, a, an um, authentic healer, someone who is has done the healing work themselves and can embody it. And, um, you know, earth angels have this lifelong passion for helping others, but um, again, they may have many personal issues or relationship challenges that they experience themselves and this is all in order to help them learn from experience before they're truly ready to teach and guide others. And it's not that we're not able to teach or guide others when we still have problems. Um, that's kind of a myth in the spiritual community. We're always going to have things. Um, truly, self-healing is a lifelong journey and there's always inner work. 
but it's that fundamental layer of awareness and of taking responsibility for our own health and well-being and for the healing of our own wounds that allows us to work in a healthy way, in a healthy relationship with others so that we're not projecting our own wounds onto them in the process. We can acknowledge our own um, setbacks or the things that we're currently working on and processing without letting it seep into or bleed into our work with others. So being a pure channel, being a pure conduit, as I mentioned before. Um, Earth angels often begin their spiritual awakening by struggling with significant health challenges, um, especially depression, anxiety, um, fibromyalgia, or chronic fatigue syndrome. Um, they can all represent the energies and the traumas that we've absorbed empathically from close contact or relationship with other people who are themselves the source of those illnesses and pain. And it can be super hard to discern this and know this in the beginning. Um, I myself uh, had no idea when I hit um, my first major health issues and mental illness issues. I had no clue that it was coming from outside of me. And it took um, quite a bit of work and seeing a lot of different doctors and specialists and going through therapy and having my own spiritual awakening for me to actually come to the realization that I had empathically absor absorbed a ton of secondary trauma um, that manifested as physical illness in my body, that manifested as depression and anxiety um, and things like that. And because earth angels um, are highly empathic souls who end up processing the emotions, thoughts, and traumas of those around them, it can be extremely distressing if they find themselves in these formal or professional situations with people who are coming to them for healing because they're experiencing a high level of sickness or disharmony in their lives. And so while earth angels gravitate towards these therapeutic professions and they make excellent healers, counselors, um, coaches, etc., the long-term success for them in these positions fundamentally requires a strong sense of self, an ability to discern the difference between their own energies, their own thoughts, their own feelings and emotions, and those of the other, whoever it is that they find themselves in that healing context with, with um, as well as strong energetic boundaries in order for them to not burn out or take on the problems of others, to bring those stories home with them and to then project them into their own personal relationships, whether it be with their own selves or with others. Um, part of what makes uh, earth angels successful as uh, healers and teachers is the next characteristic, which is that they are incredibly faithful. They have this genuine sense of hope and optimism for humanity and life. Um, they ultimately develop this deep trust in divine timing and have an ability to kind of zoom out and see the bigger picture. So when they do that, they're able to recognize that all things have meaning, all things can be used as catalysts for healing and positive change, and this leads them to believe wholeheartedly in the potential for their own lives, the potential for other people's lives, the potential for humanity and earth to ascend in this, into this higher timeline, but also a um, fundamental belief in the unseen forces of love and light. So they feel drawn to study from empowering healers, empowering messages. Um, they feel drawn to people who embody high degrees of faith and trust. And they also feel pulled towards sources of connection with the divine, such as being a part of a spiritual community or a support community, working with the angels, um, working with the higher realms, um, and connecting deeply with their own spiritual guides to renew and instill a deep sense of faith in everything they say and do. And this faith is um, very inspiring to others. And this is the next quality, which is that earth angels tend to inspire 
those that they are around or um, inspire through platforms that they seek. And it really comes down to the way that they speak and live their life, how they embody themselves as individuals and how they embody the messages that they pull through is often very inspiring and motivating to others. Just by being themselves, they open people's eyes to what is possible. They motivate other people to question their assumptions about life, to look within themselves, and to open up to genuine opportunities for healing and growth. So people might start to not only question their own, you know, potential or the way that they've been living their lives or maybe the old stories that they've fed themselves about what they are or not, you know, or aren't capable of. But people will also find themselves kind of extremely curious about how earth angels maintain that faithful attitude or endure so much pain or um, respond to the kind of ups and downs of life without becoming bitter or giving up. It's like, They have this inner well of strength and faith and belief that things will pass and that good can come from even the most um, shitty circumstances. The next uh, quality of earth angels is that they have this deep um, intrinsic connection to nature and to animals and they really see the divine light in all things. So many of us have this early childhood relationship um, and communication with our angelic team. We might have identified them as imaginary friends um, or as pretend friends or um, believe that we were just daydreaming um, about these characters that would come to us and give us inspiring messages or support or love or uplift our energy. Um, And we likely spent a lot of time being outside. Earth angels are prone to... um, recognizing that all things have life, that all, um, everything is animated with this um, unified essence or life force energy. And so earth angels talk to trees, they talk to animals, um, they feel called to heal with the elements. Um, Personally, I feel that I've always been deeply called to heal with water, um, to foster um, environments with, with plants and sunlight. Um, and so a lot of earth angels will, will mirror this as well. And and will even subconsciously seek out healing and grounding by connecting deeply to nature. Um, because part of being, um, uh, an earth angel and, and having this high energetic signature is that we kind of unconsciously leave our bodies or kind of levitate, um, towards the higher energy centers that exist above our crown chakra. And um, that might sound fun, but it definitely has some, some difficulties and consequences um, in the human world or in the external, because it may be extra hard for earth angels then to remain grounded in the present moment or to fully embody their earthly flesh, which can lead to all kinds of things, um, anxiety, clumsiness, um, lack of spatial awareness or physical coordination, difficulty remembering things. Um, you know, we may come off, come off to others as aloof or um, off in our heads, but uh, fortunately through meditation, yoga, connecting to nature, earthing, bare feet to the, to the earth, um, and other embodiment practices, we can train our attention and our consciousness to remain focused on the present, which dramatically increases our ability to ground these higher frequencies, embody these higher truths, and serve our purpose on earth in physical form. And then the last uh, quality of earth angels that I'll cover today is connected um, to this one is that earth angels experience um, a a connection, um, a deep connection and relationship to the sky element. Um, We are connected to the clouds, the stars. Um, We feel this deep sense of longing to be one with the heavens or with the higher realms. And so um, earth angels may find themselves gazing up to the sky 
gazing at the clouds, um, watching the stars, the sun, the moon, to receive this sense of connection, um, belonging, and also to, to um, open ourselves to energetic transmissions from our family of light, from the um, disincarnate angel angelics who are assisting us with our missions on earth from the angelic realm. So earth angels have um, a tendency to experience, um, whether it be through dreams or, or waking life, conscious memories, we have these memories surface of pre-incarnation experiences where we were gazing down at the earth from above. Um, we have these pre-incarnation memories of being able to fly or levitate um, to move through time and space without the density and the weight and the gravity of a human body. And many earth angels have higher selves that eventually appear to them um, in dreams or in visions or during meditation. And when they appear, they have wings of some kind, or they emanate this um, effervescent, uh, beautiful light, this kind of airy, um, sometimes even sparkly light will will emanate off of the aura and you can even sometimes see a halo appear above the head um, if they have a physical head if that's how they appear to you and um, earth angels may also find that they come across feathers on on their walks in nature or even in unexpected places which kind of serve as these synchronistic reminders of their spiritual origin and their missions for being here on earth. It's like, um, you know, a love sign or a message or an angel sign. And angel signs can come in many, many other ways. Um, earth angels have likely received or noticed angel signs such as repeating numbers, like you might look at the clock right at 1111 or 333 or 444. Um, maybe you get in your car and the radio um, turns on to a song that has to do with angels or feathers or your it might even have more specific content that's pertaining to what you've been praying about or a message that they're trying to bring through to you you might get affirmation chills when the angels are near you um, where you get goosebumps and you feel this warm compassionate presence um, you might receive telepathic messages from your angelic family um, that kind of enter in many different ways, but mine became, um, mine first showed up as telepathic messages. So I would receive them as a stream of consciousness that would flood into my awareness while I would be meditating or deeply grounded or connected um, to my breath. And I would notice that the stream of consciousness would be speaking to me um, with, in a certain tone, this confident, grounded, loving tone and they would use the word beloved um, over and over and over and it, it ultimately I be, became able to discern like oh wow that's my angels talking to me you know they always call me beloved and I always feel this safety and this sense of warmth um, emanating through my heart when I'm having this connection and again um, in the beginning did I know that Raphael was the was the um, person, you know, was talking to me through my thoughts. No, I thought that I was just having these spontaneous thoughts and streams of consciousness or streams of thought that, um, you know, was me daydreaming about being a healer or about what my purpose could be. And then over time, um, as I uh, developed, you know, a greater ability to engage in those embodiment practices and to sense subtle energy, I was greeted by Raphael and I was able to receive those messages more consciously in waking life and to discern when it was him that was around. And um, as I began working with him on healing myself and really listening to his messages and trusting and having faith in his guidance, the other angels started showing up and introducing themselves to me and giving me dream messages and um, giving me intuitions and gut feelings and guidance and angel signs and things like that. Um, but that is the uh, last quality that I wanted to share with you guys today. Um, I really hope that this benefited you. Uh, if you listen to the whole thing and um, decided you're not an earth angel, no worries. There are, like I said, 
Um, there are tons of different kinds of, of light workers who are here that may not be earth angels, but might even share some of these qualities and characteristics. You may be a star seed, um, an elemental, uh, there's a wise one, you know, an old soul, these other kinds of um, light worker missions that are also incredibly important and valuable and um, kindred with, with the earth angel mission. You're just incarnating from a different place. The last thing that I wanted to add, just to let you guys know, if you would like um, to see more content from me or engage with me um, off YouTube, I've just started a, an Instagram account called Willow and Water, and it actually ends with um, the underscore after it. So the handle is Willow and Water underscore. Um, and on that account, you can kind of follow along my journey. I offer free inspiration, um, content, kind of information um, that is relevant to light workers or to people seeking healing and um, spiritual services that I provide, such as Akashic Records readings. I do Akashic healings. I do personalized, intuitive um, oracle and tarot readings. Um, I offer channeled guidance. And um, I also offer Beyond Quantum Healing Sessions um, worldwide. Um, this, is, this is all virtually offered. So no matter where you live um, or where you find yourself, if you're interested, go ahead and um, follow Willow and Water on Instagram. Or you can email me at um, julie at willowandwater.com. I will drop the link to my Willow and Water Instagram, um, my Quantum Healers profile online, and my email address in the description box for this video as well. So again, I hope this helped you. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments or um, shoot me a message if you would prefer. Um, we can connect and um, I'm wrapping you in um, the angelic wings, the illuminated seraphim are very pleased um, that you've received this message and are sending so much love and support and solidarity to you no matter where you are on your journey, um, whether you feel angelic or not, um, whether you've realized some of these things or not, your life has meaning and the world is better because you're here. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for accepting this mission and thank you for every um, humble act of love and healing that you ripple out into our world and into the cosmos. All right. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.